So, like I said at the end of the last video, in 1735, Euler solves the Basel problem. Okay, and I've actually made an entire video on how he actually solves the problem, but I'll give you the general idea right here. So the problem, as stated, is pretty simple to understand. Okay, 1 plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 4 squared. Okay, and I think you get the general idea. And actually, if I s write these squares out, it'd be 1 plus 1 fourth plus 1 ninth plus 1 sixteenth plus 1 twenty-fifth. And it just keeps going. And this problem was posed, I believe, in 1644. And most of the great mathematicians of the time attempted to solve this, and nobody could. And it's important to note that during this time period, calculus was invented. Okay, so big things were going on in math, but nobody could solve this. Okay, and it was Euler in 1735 who finally finds the solution to this. Okay, and this is equal to this entire series. This infinite long sum adds up to pi squared divided by 6. Okay, which is quite bizarre because this pi, if you recall, is the circle constant. Okay, so why does the circle constant show up when you add up the sum of all of the reciprocals of the integers squared? Okay, it's a strange question, and I honestly don't have intuition on why this is true, but we know for a fact that it is true. Okay, and Euler extended this problem. Let's say instead of doing all of the squares in the bottom. Let's say I do to the fourth power. 1 plus 1 over 2 to the fourth power plus 1 over 3 to the fourth power plus 1 over 4 to the fourth power and so on. Okay, this would be 1 plus 1 over 16 plus 1 over 81 plus 1 over 216 and so on. Okay, and Euler found this result too that this is pi to the fourth power divided by 90. Okay, and Euler actually kept going for all of the even powers here up to 26. He was able to solve them. Okay, and he eventually finds that in general you can solve it for any even power. Okay, so like 1 plus 1 over 2 to the 10th plus 1 over 3 to the 10th plus 1 over 4 to the 10th and so on. You'll get something that's equal to pi to that power, that even power, pi to the 10th multiplied by some constant, or some crazy fraction, probably. Okay, so Euler is able to solve all of this. And if we go back to our timeline, okay, I have in 1737 that he publishes the prime product formula. Okay, and he actually gets it from what we're working on now. Okay, and the reason this prime product formula is so important is that it's the first equation involving all prime numbers. Okay, so let's say instead of calling this even powers, that I just give it a variable. Okay, so 1 plus 1 over 2 to the s. Okay, s is the variable. It can take on any number possible. Okay, plus 1 over 3 to the s, plus 1 over 4 to the s, and so on. Okay, and this is all equal to something that we now call the zeta function, but you don't have to worry too much about that. I've actually made a separate video on this problem and how he finds the prime product formula, so you can check that out if you're interested. And so what Euler does is he finds that this infinite series is equal to an infinite product. Okay, series is just a word for sum, which means addition, and product is a word for multiply. Okay, so we're going to multiply an infinite amount of things together, and it It'll look a little bit complicated, but it's not too hard to understand the basics of it. So you have this, he finds this whole sum is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus 1 over 2 to the s, and multiplied, because it's an infinite product, 1 divided by 1 minus 1 over 3 to the s, multiplied by 1 divided by 1 minus 1 over 5 to the s, times by 1 over 1 minus 1 over 7 to the s. Okay, and I think you are starting to see the pattern. Next is 1 divided by 1 minus 1 over 11 to the s. Okay, and this would keep going 
the next term would have a 13 to the s, then a 17 to the s, then a 19 to the s, then a 23 to the s, and it just keeps going. Okay, and notice here we have all of the prime numbers.